I turned my wireless on last night. I sometimes do that when I'm on my own, sitting in the kitchen, having a meal. And I was listening into that programme, you may have heard it, called The Rumour Mill. It's a very old fashioned type of programme. And I think you can only get it on the old fashioned type of wireless. You know, the ones with the valves that light up and, and they sort of give you woe and flutter and they crackle around a bit. You tune it in. The rumour mill. And I was listening to the rumour mill and uh, it was fascinating because there was a gentleman on there talking in a very sort of staid voice. Hello, this is the rumour mill. And he was saying about um, the Queen. I thought, ah, oh, the Queen. Poor old Queen. I do miss the Queen. Don't you miss the Queen? It was lovely having the Queen. Uh, she's now gone on to the next place, hasn't she? She's not passed on, passed out or passed over. She's died. And it's a bit of a shame. But anyway, I was wondering, OK, you've pricked my ears with the rumour mill. And of course, this is possibly load of old rubbish. It's all just gossip and hearsay. It can't possibly be true. But on the rumour mill, this gentleman, the posh sounding chap, was saying it was interesting that in 1953, when the Queen was doing her coronation, because we've got the King doing his fairly recently, aren't we? On I think the, in May the 6th, I believe it is. Anyway, the Queen apparently did her oath and did that whole thing at the uh, Westminster Palace or wherever it was. And she said her uh, magic words that she was the Queen. They stuck the, cr the crown on her head and all of those things. But apparently, according to this chap on the rumour mill, that she abdicated three days later and uh, she was no longer the Queen, but she became the chair of the estate. And uh, of course, I was thinking, what? And at that moment, you know what it's like, the one of the valves were sort of dimmed a bit and I couldn't quite hear it properly. And I was tuning back in. <laughs> And they started to say, yes, yes, no, the, uh, the, the chair of the estate means the crown, the crown estate, you know. And they said, but what you may not know, and of course this is just rumour, that it isn't actually belonging to the royal family anymore, or indeed the land of England. It actually uh, belongs to the bankers within the square mile in London. And I thought, what? This does sound a bit odd. So apparently she, in this rumour, she had abdicated and now was just really the figurehead uh, with the, the bankers, these mysterious bankers, apparently, according to this rumour, was telling her what to do. I found that a bit strange and most unlikely. Couldn't possibly happen in a real world. And then the other day it reminded me because a friend of mine got in touch and said, have you seen the papers? And I said, no, I don't get the papers. I don't watch mainstream media. I don't read the national newspapers. I much rather stick with my good old fashioned wireless and things like the rumour mill. And he said, oh, you should see the paper because there's a picture of these two new thrones. These are being made for King Charles and Camilla, the Queen Consort. And I said, oh, why, are the old throne, is that, are they sort of worn out a bit? And he said, no, no, no. He said, well, they need two, ch two of these new thrones for the king and the queen consort. And they're being called chairs of the estate. Well, I can tell you, I nearly fell off my own chair when I heard that. I thought, wait, that reminds me of what they said on the rumour mill. And I wondered, will the king then abdicate three days after the coronation. He's supposed to be doing an oath, isn't he? Does anybody actually know what the oath is? It's supposed to be a public oath. And of course, he's supposed to be giving his allegiance to the to us, the sovereign people of the land and upholding the traditions and the customs. But I suppose if we don't see the oath before he actually says it, we're going to be in a very difficult position to know whether he's going to be our king or perhaps the chair of the estate for these bankers. Assuming, of course, that there's any truth, which, of course, there's unlikely to be in these rumours, which I was listening to on the rumour mill. Anyway, you know what it's like with the old wireless. The signal wasn't great and suddenly the uh, the valves were dimming and there was crackling and, and I was tuning back in to try and hold the signal. And then when I got back on the rumour mill, the programme had moved on and there was a, a gentleman who was a pilot and he was talking to this other gentleman and he was saying something along the lines of, he said, oh, we pilots, you know, in this, in this modern day era, we're a dying breed. 
And I thought, well, I don't know what that means. You're a dying breed. But he did go on to explain, you see. He said, oh, no, no, we're a dying breed, a bit like in the Battle of Britain. During the Battle of Britain, he said, that they were being shot at by the enemy and many of them died. He said, but in this modern era, he said, now it seems a lot of the pilots have taken the shot and they're dying by the enemy. And I thought, I don't know what that means, really. What do you mean they've taken the shot? Anyway, apparently a number of pilots, according to the rumour mill, uh, are now sort of collapsing at the cockpit. Uh, and although no aeroplane has actually as yet fallen out of the sky because there are enough personnel on there to take over, there's no technical problems. Um, he said it is a bit of a worrying situation because a number and, and a number of these pilots are keeling over, sometimes in training sessions, and they're quite young people having sort of all sorts of strange things, heart attacks and various problems. Problems. And, he's, and it reminded me, actually, wasn't there a meeting in a place, I think it was in Switzerland or somewhere, a place called, oh, it reminds me of the Daleks, Davros. No, it wasn't Davros. Davos, that was the place. Wasn't there a meeting of the mines, some think tank, I can't remember who, and they were all very insistent, as I remember, to have the pilots who flew them there in their private jets taking them over, as I remember, it may have been just another rumour, with um, pilots who had not had the, um, you know, the medical uh, intervention. I wonder if they knew something about the medical intervention that the pilots didn't know about. But anyway, yes, so pilots now are a dying breed, which is a bit of a shame. Anyway, I was about to finish listening to the rumour mill because that was pretty much enough for me. Uh, when the pilot says, oh, before I go, I want to tell you about some crates that we've been flying around the country. And I thought, oh, crates, I wonder what's in the crates. He says, we've been uh, shifting a lot of cargo from here, there and everywhere. We've been delivering this cargo to places like Am Amsterdam, to Gatwick and to Heathrow and over to America, all over Europe. Great big lumps of cargo of medicine. And I thought, well, that's very useful, isn't it? Because we all need a bit of medicine, don't we? Unless, of course, you're like me and try to, you know, avoid doctors and hospitals like never before, seeing as I've lost a lot of faith in them thanks to a recent event. And um, but I thought, well, I, what's wrong with that? You've got to get your medicines across the country. And he went on to explain. He said this. We do this. We do, we're quite used to shipping medicines across, but not in the quantity that we are and not this one specific type of medicine. He says this huge, huge amounts of these medicines being stored in warehouses in near these airports, ready to be dispatched when they're needed. And uh, so I was thinking, oh, that pricked my ears. I was listening more intently and the signal was sort of getting a bit, you know, a bit of cross-channel interference in there. <laughs> I was listening and I thought he said, and I can't say for sure because it is only the rumour mill and you can never believe what they say in the rumour mill. It's, it's all a load of nonsense, really. But I thought he said it was to do with avian flu. Now, I knew that aviators flew, but avian flu, that's to do with birds, isn't it? So presumably a lot of birds are getting ill and these benevolent people who are shipping all this cargo are obviously making sure they've got special medical interventions for these birds. Although quite how you manage to get to the birds, you have to wait for them to drop out of the sky. And then I remembered, of course, oh, wasn't there this thing that avian flu can pass to humans? So it made me wonder, oh no, speculation, speculation. Is there going to be, seeing as everybody seems to enjoy a good pandemic, another one? Perhaps it's going to be avian flu. And maybe all this is very sensible precautions from our benevolent government uh, and indeed world governments, because it seems like there is a now a world government, not that it's been elected or anyone's asked for it, not the people, not the sovereign people, but maybe that they have got our benevolent interest at heart and they're shipping this wonderful special magic medicine, which will be another reason for us to be maybe locked down and maybe being alerted to on these, um, on these phones that we now have this special magic alert mechanism in which we will be blasted 
blasted. They're going to do a test on the 23rd of April, you know, St George's Day. Lovely day to have your mobile phone suddenly light up at the brightest and the loudest telling you not to worry. Don't panic, Will Robinson. There's no need to panic. And you think, well, why are you telling me there's no need to panic? But apparently that's it. So I wondered if the rumour mill could be saying, ah, yeah, it's a great way now that we can communicate and, and send a, you know, a little bit of worry and fear to everybody to remind them to go and make sure that they get the new medical intervention because the last one was so successful and you only have to ask some of those pilots who are a dying breed how successful those medical interventions were and maybe that's what it is. Anyway that was really getting too much for me and, and I was about to turn it off and, and one of the valves was looking a bit dodgy and as if it was going to explode because that's what they do in the old wireless sets. <laughs> when the pilot sat he said oh just before I go just to warn you, I was flying the other day and this unidentified flying object went zoom, zipping past me ever so fast and it seemed to have the name of a government on the side of it as well as UFO test. And he said, I don't really understand what it was, but he said, in my opinion, and it's only an opinion, it seems that um, there's going to be a spate of these flying about. And maybe we'll also have a text to say, warning, get inside because um, we're under attack from UFOs. Only because he's seen the testing of it, uh, that actually it's, uh, it's not real UFOs or aliens from another planet, but it's some sort of pretense. So heaven forbid that one of these things accidentally knocks down a, an airliner and people, you know, crash and die in a horrible, agonising death and that people think, oh my goodness, we're under attack from UFOs. He said, no, 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 it won't be real aliens because I've seen them testing. They've flown past. So anyway, that was the rumour mill. I thought, what an interesting programme. Take it with a pinch of salt, of course, because it's, it's just purely rumours, speculation, gossip, nothing to worry about. And just as I was relaxing, all four valves in my wireless went poof like that. And I was immersed in smoke. <laughs> For a moment, I thought my phone was going off with one of those emergency alerts. <laughs> dear, oh dear.